for everyone, make sure you check out the West West Network website at westwestnet.com. Here you can find amazing independent podcasts based in Aotearoa, covering everything from pop culture to mental health. Also, if you enjoy our content and want to support us, please consider clicking on the support button on the homepage of the website. We appreciate your patronage and look forward to delivering more thought-provoking and quality conversations. West West Show. All right, what's up? We're here another episode of Impact the Clip. What's good? What's good? What's up? What's up, boys? My name's Cam. We've got Alves and and Let's here. What's up, brothers? How's how's the, how's the week been, man? How's the week been? Uh, good. Uh, just getting yeah, getting back into it. Um, so I'm on a weight loss challenge. Uh, this week I weighed in early this morning. I lost one kg. Sort of annoyed about that. Um, was grinding, but I think I know where where I. Where I went wrong, I think it was uh, my carb intake. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, anyway, now nah, yeah, it's been a good week. I uh, did the Kennedy stairs this morning with our foot club. Uh, yeah. Yep. This. Yeah. Oh, sure, man. It's good. <laughs> it's good uh, you're keeping count of your uh, your kgs going down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's good progress. Mm. One is better than none. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, a plus one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How are you, Let's? How was your week? Oh, man. It's been a, it's been a tough week, to be honest. Um, yeah, I'd like to dedicate today's episode to my auntie. She's like been one of my guardian angels for the last 20 years of my life, I suppose, as an adult. I mean, she took her final breath last night, and yeah, today was just busy on, um, full on trying to go ping her place. And, you know, there's old school mangry houses with those freaking rugby field lawns. Oh, man. <laughs> so I was there today. I'm with the sun. That's why I'm wearing my awful. It was like two awful, like, after I moved like a third of the lawn. <laughs> 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 but, yeah, but I oh, got a letter, man. I got a letter from work. Oh, the day's off. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, yeah, you can imagine the grieving and uh, the poor about to sit down with the company. But I'm actually welcoming it. I'm looking yeah. forward to that on Tuesday. Oh, yeah. So that you can take it in some days off? No, well, remember I was telling you when I get the gout mm. and I have the time off work. Oh, right, right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think um, the employers think that you to get gout, you'll be back the next shift. Yeah, so I've got a record of 13 days. So I'm 13 and now since uh, January. But considering the OT, like 60 hour a week, and I'm, uh, my standard weeks are 48 hour a week, considering yeah. we've done like so much OT, yeah. I don't think they're taking that into consideration, considering like I'm having days off, but we're working those extra hours. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I, th- I think as long as you've got a medical cert, like that's I got nine, covered. I got nine medical certificates also. Well, yeah, that's why I'm, nah, I'm you're, like, you're sweet, bro. And I got you're one good. of my lawyer at work. You know, <laughs> always complain. He's got the king backup stories. Yeah, so that's on Tuesday, ten o'clock. So, oh no, nah, you're good. Yeah, first of all, bro, says um, sorry about your 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 auntie, bro. Your condolences. Oh, thanks, yeah. Let's. Yeah. So. She's um she's been part of the um the Ainga the King Kerbers for the last thirty years. She's a life member. Her husband's a life member as well. But yeah, it's just it's hard. It's like it's hard seeing like your um what is it? It's hard seeing my mum's siblings like trying to organize stuff because like my auntie sort of held that responsibility with the younger siblings, and whereas my mum and my older sister, her older sisters were like when it came to the other stuff, they were charge of it. So it's just good to just sit back and just, you know, not try and take over, but just sort of help and assist where we can and just keep them calming. Like, I've just felt my mum and my mum's um, comfort over me, just reminding everyone, like, enjoy the week, eh? Because yeah. once auntie's in the ground, that's it. Like, but it's good, man, because my, cousin, my girl cousins, now they've got kids, and they really, like, today I just saw the appreciation, like, in me showing up, right? Because it's like, see, when I used to come out and I had young kids... <laughs> He's be like, oh, I gotta go, man. They're like, stay, cuz, where you going? Fuck, it's early. Yeah. But now that they got kids, it's like, it's not easy, eh? <laughs> And they just laugh about it. It's like, fuck, hard out, cuz. Like, but that's the life, me. 
So it's nice. It's good to see my good cousins all growing up and stuff. Some of the cousins, man, wouldn't even recognize them, eh? But yeah, you know, they're, they're Charlie age. They start mocking her up. <laughs> but yeah, shout outs to my family out in Mangri, man. From Ponsonby to Mangri, but yeah, it's good good to um, see them over in Pishore. Pishore. Mine's he's been based there for a long time. So yeah, it's good to see all the prospects coming up. <laughs> Yeah, and the cousins been telling me shut up, cousins just leave it, man. We got some guys coming to tour. It's like shut up, that guy just want to look busy, you know. <laughs> but yeah, must be the hard year, eh? Um, sad news like that. Twenty twenty two is gonna be those hard years to remember, eh? Years to remember. But um, so we start with our shout outs. So start with you. Start with you, let's yeah, man. Uh yeah, just shout out to my um. To the King Cobras, to the Ponsonby Ainga, and to the Mangri Ainga for, um, yeah, just being solid in the last 48 hours. And, um, yeah, it's good to see my Filippo family out in South Auckland. The saddest part about about life is that this is part of, of life, you know? But, yeah, it's just sad that we've had together at funerals, man, because the last time I saw my family was at a funeral as well. But, um, yeah, no, nah, just yeah, mad love to... um. Everyone who's lost someone this year and and still coping with their grieving and stuff, they pr- that process, I do know that it does get easier, I mean, when you sort of unpack that those moments, but it's all part of, like, the creation of life, you know, and people come and go, we just do our best to live for them, if anything, but it's a shout out to everyone who's um, lost anyone in the last few months and this year. Oh yeah, shout out to um to just all my training team, uh good friends, close family members, um, and just yeah, people who are in my corner at this time. Um yeah. I truly appreciate you guys. I train a lot to I guess vent that's my way of like venting or clearing my headspace so that's why I tr- I post up a lot of training videos um yeah now yep shout out to to, to everyone here yeah. <laughs> sorry man thanks for um, taking me to training for the first time in <laughs> years uh, my first time at the gym for uh, maybe I don't know 20 years <laughs> oh man I, I think you know what when I think about it last time I went to a gym was when I was still at Unitech <laughs> Studying right now. <laughs> Suddenly, <laughs> like ten years ago, five years ago, because <laughs> your gym was. <laughs> but now, nah, man, my body is feeling <laughs> sore, man. Um, I woke up this morning, I can't even walk. My legs, my, my top half of my body, shit. Just, nah, just, I remember those those painful muscles there eh, when after first day of training. <laughs> you know, but it gets better, eh? Like, how do yeah. how do you you just gotta rest or do you keep on going? Oh, just. Yeah, if if you like, if you're during or for me, if during the training, if you feel there's it's sore, like yeah, maybe rest. But it's probably your your body's in shock. That's why. Oh, how you in shock? <laughs> so I, I guess the thing for my advice is to keep going because yeah. eventually that pain will go away. Yeah. But if you keep like yeah, and then changing up your training, because what we did was pretty simple. We were just on the bike, yeah. you know, and then just like you know changing the intensity of it because we took an hour that could we could do that in 45 minutes say 40 minutes i reckon yeah that's okay yeah because i'm f- thinking because that you know the the pain i have when i think about training is the time when i'm gonna do it oh yeah. you know <laughs> so i think the best time for me is actually in the morning before work so i can have the rest of the day so don't think about it yeah hey well, when is oh that's a good question um what time do you guys prefer to train um so you let's early early like first thing in the morning yeah, mm. yeah that, oh, that's just naturally if you're on an empty stomach empty stomach and just ready to go and it's out of the way you got your whole day to look forward to yeah, exactly yeah, exactly rest yeah. the body yeah how about you do any day because um your trainings are every day. <laughs> all train, day. yeah every, like um Oh yeah, sorry, sorry for um, Friday morning too, because this this guy misses me. Oh, are you here or something? What did you write? 
You see someone like, are you here? And I'm like, bro, I just woke up. Man. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, sorry, Not man. Not up. I know. <laughs> no. And I, cause I, when I sit, I like, I sit, purposely, I sit five alarms. Oh, you need like 11 also. <laughs> man. And I slip right through the whole bloody. Oh, shit. I just want to apologize yeah. to, um, to, to, to Jordan, if you're listening. <laughs> We're so fitness. Oh, <laughs> it wasn't my fault. I didn't drag Abby down because he's the one that's been training. I never dragged him down. He, he was, he didn't get up. I even told Judy we were going to come too on the Friday morning. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. Just another quick shout out. Shout out to um, Jordan and the uh, was it Westside Fitness Say or that call that crew for supporting um, the White Tech Re Unfitting's tag. Oh, yeah, Social yeah, man. Right, yeah. These guys were on fire. I just saw their table. Oh, how can you turn that? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, where do these guys put it, man? Shit. Yeah. But yeah, thank you. Thank you. And to you guys for supporting the tag social. It was a good turnout, man. Mm. Yeah, and I was. Hard case, eh? but I was <laughs> buzzing because Sam showed up in the physical world too. I was like, don't live, man. look at that table. Yeah. <laughs> like that table was for legit fool. <laughs> oh, man, it was, I was like, so fitness. Yeah, because I was like, in my head, I was like, fuck you, you guys have to finish that shit, man. Oh, yeah. Just <laughs> Jordan and all the ladies and some of the boys. I was like, fuck, these guys, man. These like, guys really go hard, it. man. Oh, yeah, how was it? How was the, the social? Oh, it was good, bro. Mm. It was good. I caught up with two of my boys. Like, they went drinking. I wasn't drinking. I was just like, more popular in case anything breaking out, innit? And Leif, I said later on in the night, something did happen, but I was like further away in the car park. Oh, yeah. But no, nah, it was good, good man, because they had um, spot prizes. They had about like nine drops of like different like prizes. And then they did a, um, a, a two draws for the people that didn't show up. So they drew, drew that on, on training. <laughs> I was just, nah, man, I was just blown away with the support, eh? Because shit, yeah, the DJ was on, eh? Like, man, she didn't show up. But then one of the old boys' little brother was DJing. I was like, so like, who's that guy? The boys like, do you remember that guy? I was like, nah, I remember his brother. But he was playing all the on jams, eh? Yeah. You, know, like, you, know, you know it's on jams, like, when the songs just started, then you hear the screaming. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the every song. Like, <laughs> can you, like, just dance already? Uh. Yeah, man, but it's good vibes, eh? Good vibes up there. Yeah, sorry, I didn't come. Because we had uh, a, a relative had a birthday it was the 60th and we had it at uh the Genghis and in, in Newland. you know i was you know <laughs> i didn't mention it but i probably mentioned after the podcast last time but i did we did go to try oh, out um gangnam, yeah. gangnam style so like the worst experience i've ever had <laughs> oh, <laughs> wait, well, you, gotta, you, gotta, you, gotta, you gotta explain why was it the worst oh, oh man, the what? food wasn't great man the food was one out of ten mate what, what time did you go uh, we went for dinner, so oh. maybe six already. Oh, okay. And you gotta jam. cook it, <laughs> but it's not cook it yourself. You gotta cook it yourself, yeah. but it was, it was jam packed. I swear it was jam packed. There was like one seat left. We were lucky to get that one table left because it was packed. I swear there was a long line, but the line was to the um sides, <laughs> the side dishes, not the not the raw meat to go oh. cook. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, no, nah, that's probably why because it was packed. Because I remember this one time I went there. It was chock, yeah. It was it was a Saturday night, and it was chock a block, man. Yeah, oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So I had a bad experience because I didn't like the food. I don't, I don't like the food, and it was I don't know it was too much of a hassle because it was packed. Yeah. Yeah, but the food was the biggest dumb disappointment dumb. for me. Yeah. Anyway, I had that experience. Okay, never gonna go that there again. Went to to Genghis Newland. Hey, man, so much better, eh? Is it? So much better. The quality of food, you know, mm. the the size you can get, the dessert. Dessert was on, you know. Is, it's, it, is it the same as the one on Lincoln Road? Has to be. Has to be. It's the one in Newland. But, um, but I'm just, New, I'm, Newland, New Newland setup's a lot nicer. I yeah. Is it? It's more intimate. Yeah. Hi, intimate. Oh, yeah. Good to know. Um, <laughs> but I'm just, I'm just comparing between these two places, Genghis and yeah, yeah. Genghis yeah. style. I'm not as comparing head head, yeah. as head to head. I'm not comparing Genghis to anything else. So yeah. that's one apiece then. So you, Eric, you got to go. <laughs> Eric, you got to go. And, <laughs> and then I'll come in and deal break after that. Right? Just to give it a, you know. Yeah. So the, so the listeners can understand. Like, yeah. No, because, yeah, like, I can understand that how packed it gets. Like, I remember when, um, so when we were group, my two cousins and a group of friends, like, the table, like, the next table, like, you can feel, like, their seat was behind my seat, you know? And that's, that, that's how a chocolate block it was. And it was like, yeah, it was really packed. And then, you know, obviously, 
Damn. But then the, so the other time I went, it was like dead. It was only like a few people in there, you know? And it was... Yeah. Know. But it was, it, was, it was $35 a hair there. $35. Yeah. And I can understand why it was packed. Because if we pay $35 and just go for the side, the sides, yeah, it's still a good meal, you yeah. know? For all you can eat, you know? Because... Yeah. Yeah, a lot of a lot of people in line didn't go for the raw meat, but because the sides were like fried rice, got chips, you got fish, you got sweet and sour. Eh? Yeah. But then I never saw any, they didn't even eat salmon food that night. Oh man. Oh, probably last shout out is um, if you can see the the tea that um Cam's and um Avia sporting, is um yeah Cam's has changed the new um was like second shot eh? second <laughs> shot. Eh? Uh, Kim's has changed the empty out the clip um, podcast um, screen. So shout out to um, How G um, Apparel, um, Daryl Afiaki. Uh, man, came through with the goods. It's really, Gross. really cut, um, you know, really cut that to size. To um, That's Ave with a 2XL t shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Makes them look, oh my gosh. Well, they're training, mate. <clears throat> but you yeah, appreciate clean. that man on short notice. And they came through with the goods. He actually said it was ready Friday. <laughs> But then he went down to the Masters tournament down in Christchurch. So, yeah, he didn't have the time to say, come by, pick them up. Man, oh, shot. Shot also. No, it's nice. It's nice. You know, as a um, as a t-shirt, that kind of um, print. is a vinyl print now. It's a vinyl. vinyl. Yeah, he pressed. Yeah, he pressed vinyl print. That it, that kind of logo would be perfect for that kind of style of printing now. Mm. So, nah. Shot also. That was, that was good, uh... That was a good hookup. Yeah, sure. Let's <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll have, um, I was going to have a shout-out, but I think I'll move my shout-out to the next subject because it sort of goes hand-in-hand, hand, and that's the uh, what's on your social media feed, the, what's trending. Because oh. I don't know about you guys, but, man, my, my phone was full of up because he's scoop this week. <laughs> 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 and shout-out to the girls for, um, you know, doing doing a episode... That relates to so many people. Well. Oh, not, that relates to everybody actually in the whole world. Because when you're talking about body parts, <laughs> you know everybody's got the same body part, yeah. whether you're male, or female, and there's some small, <laughs> some um, smaller, <laughs> and some bigger. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was it was a good uh, it was a good insight to what goes on with their podcast. I've got scoop in, and congratulations to the girls for the first day. They reached like 15k. Views on TikTok. Wow. Winning. Close to hitting <laughs> 20K. So. Winning. <laughs> what, yeah, what, what's your, um, like, when it comes to topics like that, you know, it, what I found interesting about it is that the girls were like, um, oh, well, some of the girls were like, you know, um, sort of, I don't know what the word is, is it upfront or not shy to talk about it? You know, with me, like me, with me personally, um, like sometimes I, I think I'll most of the times I would be shy to talk about stuff like that. You know, Do, what are, what are your guys' thoughts on that? Like being like, are you open to that sort of talk? Or yeah, well, I think they've made it because that that segment's their 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 space, so they've obviously felt comfortable sharing. And mind you, like Kim said, the questions that come in are from the from the, the people with mind. listeners and the viewers. Yeah. So they're just clearly asking stuff that, that's, that, that they thought about. They didn't have the fools to actually talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> but my take on the, the, the video that's obviously got the feels and <laughs> got the views, because it's the obviously feels. got on Twitter. Got the when, feels, on, right? when, you, when you're on Twitter and you, and you, and you get you get <laughs> full sanganga like watching your video, that's how you know it's trending. But I just I was, I just had to laugh because I saw it like this. was like, when they started talking about the favorite bottle, in my head, I was like, girl, yeah, I need to watch some bottle. <laughs> like, straight up. Go into Pornhub, type in favorite bottle, and see what comes up. Because <laughs> the explanations that was going back and forth, like, cracked me up when I heard stick. Oh, boy. <laughs> you knew the stick. <laughs> okay, can you, uh, can you just rewind that? <laughs> I loved it, eh? I loved it. I loved it because... Of course did. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. There's so many w- things I love about that l- little snippet and and what the girls talk about in their podcast. Like you know, they talk about stuff that, like you said, n- people's too scared to talk about. But it's part of everyday life. Yeah, it doesn't matter what that 
subject is as long as it's something that people don't talk about. So I'm, I'm, I appreciate the girls in Africa's scoop that talk about these things, whether it be what they talked about in that video or anything else. Because there's a lot of things that are left unsaid, I think. Yeah. This is what Gob's making there, because I, I, didn't, I didn't watch the video, just the snippets that were posted, because I listened to it the first time when, when he posted it on the chat. So I listened to it all the way to work and on the way home, and I was laughing. But what cracks me up is that some of those questions that get sent in, right? People, Twitter, whatever platform, Google. <laughs> like, <laughs> you will find everything on Google. <laughs> the fact that people want to write these facilities in, whether they're taking the piss or really want to know. Like, fuck, Google, man. This is just yeah, crazy. Man. But it goes to show you, like, the scope of um people that are engaged with the girls you know, and that are listening in, yeah. which is a good thing, uh, you know? That's a good point because yeah, you can Google these things, <laughs> right? <laughs> but are they doing it to get to watch their the girls' reaction and yeah, the girls' yeah. banter? It's all of it, bro. Because it's know, the girls' all, banter and the reaction, yeah, eh? and the reaction, and but, how they, and how they speak about it. But it's like clearly, like they just wanna talk about it. <laughs> oh, fuck it, ask the girls. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or like yeah, you know, yeah. they've obviously gained a, a good, steady lot of um listeners and viewers that they wanna hear their question from you know they want their question put out of the box, you which know, is a good. Questions that Cam know that they were gonna do that. <laughs> no, that's what he got to stuff, no, no, it was one of the questions. Oh, oh in, the, so in the box. Yeah. None of the none of the none of the answers on their podcast, they don't know anything about oh, the answers. Okay. It's all because they wanna do it like when they read out a an, uh, a question, it's better if they're not not they're not ready for it. Yeah. So they just put it on the spot. So yeah. <coughs> oh, okay. Wow. No, yeah, I find that this this stuff is definitely hilarious. Um, so you on next week, Charlie? Nice. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> but no, just just thinking about what lady said about you know, if anyone can just Google, it is that that, that sounds me because I never thought about that, but it sounds me how you know how Pacific Islanders joke around and mock. Yeah, you've got that flavor in their answer. You know, and you can't get that anywhere. Or where, where, where can you get that kind of flavor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. anywhere else. Yeah, if you're talking that. talking our people's language, you know, our yeah, yeah. our kind of banter, you know. Especially if they see our our tone of people on the picture, like in the videos. Yeah, and, and that's obviously foreign, eh? Because it's like, oh, know, these girls are just straight out the gate, eh? Yeah, yeah. Just like some of the, because I read some of the comments on TikTok, like um, it's like at the end of the day, it's you know, um, just another, uh, I guess, voice. You know, out the girls, uh, the scoop, their their opinions and whatever they thought about. You know, um, getting out there, and then there's people that are taking might take it the wrong way. Um, just at the end of the day, people, it's you know, you don't have to take it to to heart or anything. It's good that you have an opinion. Write it up on the you know the comments and that, but it's yeah, just. Relax. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, the other thing is if if there was a if you replace the girls with free Balangi girls <laughs> and, and they did the same questions, it'd be a totally different. Hey, it'd be totally different. Hundred percent. Probably would be probably be fucking boring. Man. <laughs> and you know what? And I can imagine those questions coming out like, "So have you ever shat?" <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the Amber Turd. There's another Amber Turd in there. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I, I think it's important that, you know, as, because, you know, this whole thing with the, the West Coast Network, you know, we, we represent West Auckland, we represent being Polynesian, being Pacific Islanders, and we we like what we like, you know. We don't like, we like what we like, and that doesn't mean we have to like things got to do with, um, Pacifica all the time, you know. We we like other things, that, but we're giving our own perspective on it, yeah. you know. And these other things that we talk about might not be out there mainstream. So this is a point of difference. This, that's what the podcast to me is all about. Point of difference. There's heaps of podcasts out there. You know, you 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 want to hear one that you can relate to. Yeah. He um. You just reminded me. Um. A, a shout out to Alex down at Westside Fitness. He was my training partner on Monday. He was saying that he listened to um one of the episodes you had with uh the 
the the um the MP the the Balangi guy what was the one Craig Lord Craig Lord yeah yeah you, yeah he was saying you listen to that um and then, I'll be honest that turned me off um and I was like man we're gonna listen, come on man we're, we're jumping you know like, <laughs> no I mean like because yeah I'm not really into the parliament sort of like the mm. politics sort of things but. Yeah, he did say he, um, he listened to that episode. Oh, uh, did you like it? Yeah, because he's, um, he's into that, like, I think his background isn't, like, the poli- he's into that mm. sort of thing. Yeah. I was like, come on, man, let's put on scenes, you know? <laughs> See some weeks. <laughs> so, yeah, um, looking forward to seeing you guys on Afghan's group <laughs> in the future. Yeah, let's. <laughs> Yeah, let's. <laughs> yeah, man. I can't wait to see what we got to drink first. <laughs> <laughs> okay, talk some more, man. So the last oh. podcast, the last podcast, you know, we 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 actually did the podcast before they played their first game against England. So we were all hyped up. <laughs> we were all. We were all the, I think that's where it started. Was, that's where we asked how the week was. I know more from when we lost the game. Oh, <laughs> I have to the work later to my auntie passing. Gifts, man. Yep, yep. So, you know, we were unfortunate to do the podcast before the 60 to 6 loss gifts. But um, we had a whole week of mourning <laughs> and a lot of, maybe, a lot of Samoans, man, were so angry. Turned to social media to put the team down. You know, and um, which led to some of the players speaking up on social media, asking for forgiveness and asking for the fans to apologize. Now, there was a lot of uh, takes that came out of that. And uh, I just want to get your, your guys' take on that. That of Star you, Let's. Oh, man. Where do I start, Oops. Where do I start? Like, man, and I want to I wanna keep this 100, man. Like, like I've I've said in the last few episodes about people asking like or trying to like it's putting an expectation on how how we're talking to someone is right when it comes to fans like no one can tell you how much of a fan you are right you know in your own how much of a fan you are yeah. the thing where people are getting a fucking twisted now is the difference between banter and like hating like straight fucking just shooting like shit like oh fuck that guy's a useless cunt why is he in there and they was even in the team. Get rid of the coach and all that shit. The thing is, people, when you start doing that, all you're doing is just adding to all the bullshit that's been, in the, that's on yeah. fire, right? So, like, nothing nothing great comes out of that. What's even more sad is that so many people are jumping on their bandwagon of, like, saying they should have done this, they should have done that. They should, like, that energy is is pointless. But at the same time, on social media feeds, everyone has the right to, to vet however the fuck they want. Yeah. That's what social media is pretty much for. And that's how it's used. But people need to remember, right? Your shit's going to get seen. And people will see it. And it becomes that, oh, that guy's one of those dudes. But everyone does it, right? There's no, there's no, there's nothing wrong with venting about, man, boy's got kasali, eh? People just need to remember, at the end of the day, it's just a fucking game, man. Yeah. It does One not game. mold how your life will turn out. Yeah. Like, these guys, that's their profession, but they're there representing Samoa. The thing that I have an issue with, right, is because they did it a couple of World Cups ago, is that there was a like, like sort of like a way of how they chose the team. And the team should have been um, listed with at least five homegrown or like you know, Samoan grown oh, yeah, yeah. players. They then pick a couple from, like they play local football in New Zealand and Australia. They then get picked on the team. But if they're not on the playing field, they should be on the playing roster at least. Because like what's happened now is they've got a handful of injuries. But that's to say that this is a tour Samoa pick team. Like, you know, that way. Because if you look at it now, because the first thing I saw on Twitter was that that after we lost. <laughs> and this is how ugly some of the fans are. <laughs> that team was not the tour Samoa team because it was a, a tour Samoa heritage team. Because none of them come from Samoa. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So like that's probably the most only valid comment in hating that I've seen on all social media. Yeah. Apart from like expecting the chemistry of all the players to be like hundred percent because they were from the Panthers and they played finals forty and State of Origin. 
that was pretty much the only thing that I saw that really made sense. It's like, yeah, it is a Toa Heritage team because of the process that they followed when they picked it. Because they didn't pick the homegrown guys to be even just on the roster, you know? Because yeah. they don't have to play them. At the end of the day, it's sort of like, okay, this team was picked. But then it is a Samoa Heritage team if you look at it overall, you know? Yeah. And right, just to hear that or see it on Twitter, it was sort of like, Really? Yeah. Have we got it to that point over yeah. one loss? Yeah. Like it's just a fucking game, relax, man. Like, man. relax, man. man it's a game. Like tournament and we're already jumping ship. <laughs> <It's Yeah>. like, <laughs> <laughs> but that's where the, the fakeness... Well, the thing about the fakeness is that annoys me is that, like, man, no one has the right to measure someone's, like, how, how loyal they are, you know? Because, yeah. like, yeah, I can bitch a man about my Parramatta Eels, but I'm never going to stop fucking supporting them. Yeah, you know, it's just the venting. It's just the I want to talk about it. You know, yeah. And like, yeah, man, like Mister, they fucking fuck your ass, guy. That's all I got. It's just the game, guys. <laughs> <laughs> just go back to your normal life. You know, it's yeah. not the end of the world, but yeah, just it's quite upsetting, you know, just to see the way we are. You know, but I mean, at the end of the day, that's how we are. That's a good. That's a good um response to that. Let's the the Samoan bass players. Are there any in the tour Samoa team right nah, now? None. They, they didn't pick any. Oh, but I say who? Because uh, that's like for me, I'm trying to think who is Samoa based. Nah, they didn't do it this round. They oh, never, they didn't do it. But does the Samoa have like a league comp? Yeah, no, nah, they have a local comp. And oh, usually, okay. like I think last World Cup, they had five guys they pick locally. Because I remember tour Samoa put the um put it out there for people to. I uh, wanted to know, like, because they were like, oh, what? Are, how come they haven't picked any homegrown talent? Yeah. Then they said, oh, hey, they got all these guys here for the villages. And then they'll pick two abroad, which is one from New Zealand. They plays club that's not NRL, and then one from Australia. Because I remember one of the boys, Junior uh, Futu, he made the team from here, and he went across. He had to pay his own passes here, but he's like saying, these guys just got me here, you know, just to say that they went through the due process of picking the team. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it was oh. like... Yeah, yeah. Just, just relax, guys. It's just <laughs> one game. Just one game, man. Just Fuck. one game. Come on. Um, are they playing Ireland? Eh? Oh, they're playing Greece. Oh, what, what time? Tomorrow morning. Oh, okay. Oh, oh no, no. Sorry, Monday morning. Monday Tomorrow morning. Sunday. Yeah, Monday right. morning. It's, ho- it's holiday on Monday, so people can watch. Oh, but it's <laughs> still not on Sky. Eh? No. Oh man! But if you want to watch it, come to you, pay my five dollars and you can watch <laughs> it from my phone anywhere on my driveway. <laughs> I'll give you my Wi-Fi. Just find somewhere on the wall, you know, bring a sleeping bag and whatever. I, r- I remember um, there was uh, I remember on social media like a few years back um, I responded um to a comment um that someone posted up. You know, and this is me thinking, like, okay, I'm hard. No one, you know, little old me, no one's going to respond to my little comment or whatever, right? So I, um, it was when the I heard the Warriors were trying to get Steve, uh, Matai, Matt, you know, they're trying to get him to come over. And then I wrote, who, like, you know, we don't, like, I said, um, who was Steve Matai? Like, we don't need him, you know, because I was a Warriors fan back then. And, you know, I said that, whatever. And then I think it was, um, Oh, then um, this lady comments, I think it was his sister, commented underneath, you know, who the F are you, you know, blah, blah, blah. Whoa, 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 and then my whoa. cousin, and my cousin in my defense said, oh, cuz, that's some um, Steve Meadows, you know, sister, you know, and I'm, and I'm like, oh, then I said to my cousin, cuz, can you just uh, reply and just say sorry to her? <laughs> um, I just, oh, I just oh, thought oh. I was a big honcho. <laughs> Yeah, I was the Iron Man. Reverse, reverse <laughs> out of there, bro. <laughs> but you know what I will say? There was, there was a time where, um, <coughs> where Steve was on his, like, he, he he didn't make the Kiwis. And he was eligible to play for the tour. Yeah. And I remember it getting circulated around the boys. Because I played rugby with Steve. And a lot of the Richmond boys were saying, fuck, did you hear? Like, they were saying that Nigel Wagner told him not to come and play for the tour. Oh. I remember that being a big thing, too. Because he would have gone in and I think he would have been captain then. I think Royal Satasi would have been playing for them at the time. Yeah. But it was just before. He was like, they they told him, nah, we're not set up properly yet. But like, who does that, eh? Man. Like, these are these hidden agendas, yeah. eh? Yeah. Like, fuck. Any telling. He, hey, he, man, he's a hit, he's a hit man. He's danger, man, you know? Yeah, bro. He's the man. Room 22, Wolves, room 22. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's interesting you can see the sort of changing of the guard. 
because back in those days of Tor Samoa, it's mostly New Zealand based players that are the dominant in the team, right? Yeah. But now you got the those young dudes from from Penrith Pimpers. coming up, Luai and Tor and all those guys. They're based in Australia. You know, they grew up in Australia. So it's sort of like the you see the change now. Now they're being the most dominant guys in the team sort of thing now, eh? So they're probably gonna sort of not take over but actually have a big say in, in how the team the team the team culture will be. I don't know how what the the, the culture is with I know it's Simon culture, but there has to be a little bit of difference with uh, the Australian flavor coming through. Uh, with, with how they, especially with, with those guys, those guys growing up there. Well, some of the one of the comments that pissed me off when I saw it on um, during the week was like someone, and it was like a tour or someone like supporter was like saying, "This is what happens when you party too much during the week." I was like, "What the fuck?" No, I'm like, sure no one's like, party. Ever man. one game, yeah. Like in their minds, like. Man, I think there's some people that's too proud, eh? Too proud, man. It's only a game, man. Fuck. Relax. Relax. Eric, oh, what, what's, what's your predictions on... Now we went... Oh, was it the next game? Because, <laughs> 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 no, nah, I will tell you this. I'll say why. <laughs> Come on, Cunha. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, we <where> was he? <laughs> nah. My good boy, uh, Solo Kin, was saying, nah, Bar- Parrish has to go. And I said, why? And he goes, Fuck. Why are you going to start four fucking front rowers in the fucking forward pack? And Ken coaches rep football every now and But he was like, it doesn't make sense, man. Like, yeah. if, you got a, if you're a back row, you're a back row. Like, there's a big difference between a prop and a front row. Like, you know, or the front row and the second rows. But I was like, oh, I never thought of it like that. And he goes, well, these guys are going to be gassed after 10 minutes, man. You know, <laughs> then no one wants to tackle. <laughs> but yeah, that was buzzy, eh? And he said it like that. So speaking of Matt Parrish, so just breaking news just came out on social media. Uh, Willie Pochin um, was invited to go training, training with the boys and, and speak to them, give them some inspiration on that. And he was turned away by the coach. And then in, uh, in a statement, uh, Willie Pochin says, I came away pretty upset. I feel like I'd done a lot for Samoa and the jersey. Dad was one of the blokes who started the team. There is no Tor Samoa right now as we know it. Referring to uh, the coach and the setup, maybe. Yeah, that's wrong, eh? That's wrong on so many levels, man. That's um, this is where the people that that are in the space now, uh, you gotta pay homage to the guys that paved the way before. Yeah. I'm gonna let up there. Those guys fucking break their backs. They have nothing to stand on. Yeah. So now that's but then that's just freaking new culture. Oh, just stupid. Like you know, he's not obviously Samoan. I mean, he he wasn't embraced in the in the culture, so he wouldn't know anything about it. You didn't do that, eh? Like anyone that's you look at, like say big NRL teams and people who have played international rugby, you never get turned away when you get to a change room. Yeah. Like I said earlier, fuck if I got turned away from the Carlson Fisher of Dean change room, I was burning that You're shit burning down. It. <laughs> burning it down, bro. But that that that's just culturally insensitive, huh? like yeah. especially to Samoans. You think of it like this: when you bring someone into your house and you feed them up, you don't you don't usher them to the side of the house. You yeah. bring them in. You bring them in. You welcome it. You know you're supposed to welcome them. You didn't fucking make someone who was part of the setup feel like an outsider. Yeah. So man, man, lots of William fucking what he's going through, bro. Because I'll be shattered if I got turned away like that. I, I think um, I think the boys just need to prove it, like to prove uh. Um, prove it on the field. The game against Greece. I reckon they'll have a blinder. Eh? I reckon they'll have a mean game. F- for um, tomorrow is it tomorrow morning. Yeah. What are your thoughts on uh? <laughs> what what are you to, um, oh, <laughs> the next one. Yeah, oh. next. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks. He just cut me off. Woody, the next time you see Ave, just give him a little, <laughs> give him a little punch to the face. <laughs> <laughs> well, probably because you play for North Korea Tigers, or skull of fire. <laughs> you know what? I, okay, I'll give my take on the whole Tor Samoa and the apology thing to the fans. See, I, because I love American sports, I come from that kind of sports culture where yeah. the fans are diehard fans, no matter what they do, win or lose. Passionate. They're, they're passionate and when I mean passionate they're going to hate you when you lose they're going to yeah. love you when you win it's going to change from week to week those two extremes so if that's the if that's the case for someone's and I don't I don't know why the players would apologise for if that's the case 
but I don't know how someone's react. Like, no, I do know how they react. It's like I don't believe they're gonna completely not support them, no matter what. I know yeah. they I know someone's were angry about the game and they'll vent their frustrations on social media and that, but then they're, they're not gonna fully disown, you know, towards yeah. Samoa, you know. So. Well, it's not the yeah, it's the World Cup. Like there's more games. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In the first game, yeah. So, yeah, that's my five cents. So good as social media trends. Stuff you as what what's been training on your phone when you're sitting on the the folly wheeler? <laughs> just all hold on. Just the yeah, obviously the the girls episode of Cam. Um and I get a lot of um just training for the G. Friend request, yeah. <laughs> Tra- <Oi. laughs> training footage. It's a lot of training for the Reels, eh? Reels, um, Oh, okay, yes, no, you just, you know, I just clicked, all right? Um, so I've been learning how to do, like, um, you know how the reels go with the, like, say your footage goes with, like, the music? So I've been doing, like, and it, they give you tutorials on how many seconds you should edit, you know? So I've been doing a lot of that, you know? <laughs> I know. <laughs> what an amazing life, eh? Hey. <laughs> nah, that, but that's what I've been doing. Um, have you fun? <laughs> <laughs> but no, I've seen your wackles. I've seen yeah, I just your, your standards. <laughs> you see, at the start, you were like punching it like a two and a half. <laughs> <laughs> now, now you're about a seven out of ten. Was. Oh, boy, boy, I don't oh man, no, because like, that's yeah. the style. I was like, sorry, like, Kevs, you saw his, his um, food trucks footage, oh, <laughs> and you can see yourself. <laughs> see, I've been to the food trucks about a couple of weeks ago, and Kev was like motion sickness from watching his footage. <laughs> So so is, this, is this a result for anyone that that's seen any of, of his uh, fitness reels? Man, like I said, he was punching two and a half. And it was about seven out of ten. Said so the standards coming up. But now, yeah, I'm just, yeah, I'm just <clears throat> watching. And then they um they actually give you like the tutorials on like how like say for example, example you got like five videos and they um split the they tell you what seconds how many seconds you should edit the video. You know to go with the sound effects. Mm. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Yeah, just you know, this is fine. That was the part <laughs> nah, man. You can, you can, but well, that's why you, you said it's trending. You, you yeah. can edit it with your um, <laughs> fifteen seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Tutorial, brother. Oh man. <laughs> anyway, cool work stories. Um, yeah, I've just been yeah doing doing a lot of um editing <laughs> reels. Yeah. Have you let's anything showing up on your feed? Um, that's trending, trending, trending. Shucks, apart from all the toss, I more stuff. Um, yeah, like, like I was mad. I've been, I didn't realize how fixated you can get caught up when you're watching reels, uh. yeah, like, man. you're learning like 30 seconds. But, like, um, one guy I follow, and uh, bro, he's got some good content, is um, Johnny Tuivasa. Oh, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, I've seen yeah. his latest, Bruh. some of his latest stuff because he's always he's just doing it by himself. But I think his last one was talking about, um, I think it's the Warriors player. And he does the switch up. Like, yeah. If you see his content, like, I think it explains how Samoans are as as supporters. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because they go, you can go from, like, to the video in a nutshell is pretty much, did you watch the game? Nah, I didn't watch the game. Or to, do you follow these guys? Yeah. And then I went straight from watching the game to personal. <laughs> like, oh, <yeah. laughs> so he was like, oh, so you didn't watch the game? No, I didn't watch the game. And he's like, oh, yeah, but they just brought in a new guy. And he goes, oh, so have you got it in our contract? <laughs> it's like straight. <laughs> <laughs> but that's typical. To me, that's typical. Someone here, eh? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, did I ask? It's like, no. oh, what? Yeah, his, his, reels, yeah. his reels, his reels are, are fire, I bro. Can, yeah, I can watch one and then just carry on watching. Yeah. And then just laugh. Hey, him and Rick, they, they content's hard KC. See, and that, that's an example of what I was saying before about our banter, our kind of humour yeah. on different topics. Even topics that, see, if you look at, at Johnny's videos, that's our humour, right? Yeah. But yeah. he'll never talk about 
the stuff the girls talk about. African scoop people talk about. Yeah. Right? But African scoop girls, they got the same kind of humor. That's our kind of humor. Yeah. Mm. So out there automatically there's content that you can't hear anywhere else. Yeah. And I, I like um Johnny's reels with um is it that Terrell guy? I I mean the, like they do I like do little skits or whatever. That's 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 crack up. <laughs> yeah, from under. Fucking that's the hard case one, eh? When he talks about <laughs> when he talks about um have you been to that um restaurant and he was, he was, you know the one up the road? What's it called? And he was from under and he was from under where? Is these nuts? And he starts <laughs> cracking up me. And then the reply was like, Was that the nuts that your missus played on you? Oh, <laughs> straight away. <laughs> oh, no, hey, Marsha, no time Man, my, my, my favorite uh Johnny Skill was the one when when the Warriors score tries and there's no try, and when the opposition <laughs> scores try, there's always a yeah. try, but they you can tell it's not a try. Yeah, have you seen that one? <laughs> no, yeah, no. that's a but no, that's no. very if you think about it, they fucking was legit. Eh? They like was every, time, every time the Warriors get to the bunker, like, yeah, yeah, fuck, yeah, man, <laughs> every time they went to the bunker, and because you know, sometimes they play that live, everyone's looking at the screen and it's like. I've got a decision you can get. <laughs> that, that's a no try. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, are you sure? But the funniest no try was when the Warriors scored a try. It yeah, was an yeah, obvious yeah. try, but the ref goes, boys whistle and goes, now, uh, Bunker, can we take it back to, um, <laughs> to the first half? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah man. <laughs> Crack up, man. <laughs> yeah, that's all I've got on my. What are yours? What are yours, games? Social media, man, because cause I follow NBA. NBA season started on a Wednesday, so I'm getting all these NBA games, the plays and that. Yeah, man. So, because I'm trying to get back into it, because I, I didn't really follow it last season, but I've changed my team. I changed my team this year. Jump ship from Portland but to uh, Miami Heat. Heat. All right, yeah. But the Miami Heat was my team ages ago. Yeah, but yeah, I jumped back on there. Go the balls. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, in the news, it was sad about um, Brown Butter being there. Like oh, his, uh, apparently, his um, food bank got robbed and uh, they stole all the meat in the freezer. I saw the f- thing on the news on all the food, all the cans of food, and, and all the chicken, the whole chickens in the, in the freezer. And uh, he came on the radio as well as came on TV, and he was just saying. But the thing that struck me was, and he said, "Oh man, it's a food bank. If you wanted food, we would have given you, yeah. given it to you anyway." Yeah, yeah. yeah so. I mean, it's the, it's the, it's a resemblance of the times, eh? Yeah. Like, um, you remember when Dave first opened up that gym? It was to help people on their their health and their weight loss journeys. He saw that, um. People were starting to, you know, become like through the first lockdown. Eh, people were losing their jobs, and he was like saying, "Bro, blue collar people are like finding it real tough right now because there's only so many food banks." So he he started up the food bank, and then he said, "Like, if you look at one part of Great South Road where his his, his um gym is set up, he would have heaps of people, like you know, just queuing up just to get in there to get some, like the staples, eh." So to hear that that's happened to someone like him, man, it's like, fuck, it's, it's sad, eh? And, and the fact that, you know, these are like, that that stuff for people who are struggling, and then maybe these guys were struggling. Who knows? But it's the fact that you're going to take your net away from other people who really need it. Yeah. It's where it makes you feel like where society is, especially like, you know, having done the whole bloody lot, like, you know. It's yeah, it's quite quite sad. I mean, how it goes out to Dave and his his, his team. Like you know, th- those guys don't get paid for the stuff that yeah. they do. You know, they they purely do it out of the goodness of their heart, just to help people struggling. So it's yeah, it's quite bizarre that people would go and rip a place like that off. It's like trying to rob the RC. You know, yeah. it's like fuck. That's like low way. So whoever's got the food, yeah, I hope you get freaking. Um, <laughs> Salmonella. <laughs> Fuck. I think oh, they caught no. the person. I think. Did I they? Think I saw on the. I wrote the read it. I thought. I think they. Did. I don't know. I mean, I the worst thing he can do is get all that stuff right, and then like, remember when the um, some malls were rolling out the vaccines. Yeah. And then some places you had to pay to get vaccines, and then someone fucking stole a pallet. 
but where they where they moved it from when they ngawed it, fucking they didn't keep it refrigerated. So all that shit went to waste. Oh. I mean, that's the last thing you want to happen if these guys ripped it off and then they got nowhere to store it. And then it's all one muff away. Man. Then it'll be like, well, fucking, did that bite you in the ass, you know? But yeah, it's crazy, man. Yeah. My my opinions for that is, my opinion, yeah, that's pretty sad. Like, he has done a lot for the community. Um, also, he's starting up, uh, like, the boot camps and all that, like uh, the gyms, the BBM gyms, you know. Um, yeah, but, uh, yeah, what we were saying, it's the, the signs of the times, you know. Um, yeah. Like, back a few years back, who, who would ever think of robbing a food bank, you know, especially one that, and, um, you know, like, uh, I'm sure whoever, like, took it, the the people that like say for example if I took it right, someone in my f- circle or family would say, "Hey, you know, what? Where did where, you know? Uh, first of all, why did you take it, and what are you gonna do with all this food? You know, use it. You know, use your common sense and like return it, give it back. You know, because my mum was superstitious as fuck, man. Like." People that do that sort of shit come up, comes back <coughs> fucking tenfold. Eh? Yeah. And like, it ain't gonna be nice, man. Like, I would be surprised if one of those people gets free poisoning. Like, you know, it's just bizarre that yeah. someone, bro, like, th- that's n- that's n- like not a joke. Like, they made butchers' jerseys, right? Yeah. They're jerseys. But I mean, to m- now people the are molly them on others because they didn't have any f- frozen yeah. meat and stuff. It's like, fuck. So many people have missed out. Yeah. Have one stupid freaking action. Eh? What are your takes, James? Yeah, I'm, I'm just the same as you guys. I mean, it's if it, if it is this, it must be the sign of the times because of all the ram raids and all the all yeah. the crime happening. You know, things are getting harder for people. You know, who are, who are less fortunate. And I think that's just a. You know, I think everybody gets affected, whether you're a dairy owner getting ram raided or makahu. Or now brown butter beam, it just takes it to an, to another sort of conscious level, yeah. you know. And whether that's a wake up call for society that things are getting bad, worse, you know, if things get worse if butter bean gets robbed. Yeah, hard, <laughs> a guy man. like that, you know, yeah. and he gets robbed. You know, things are getting worse out there, you know. And it, Facts. And and for me, man, I always if you want to if you look to the government, that's it's, it's labor's job to handle that um that kind of thing especially with, especially with people who are who who are working class you know because because they're the ones that are i think they're the ones who are suffering right now with you know everything everything that's going on with inflation and you know it's harder things are getting harder yeah so next is the uh the food, the food review. <laughs> we got a food review. Oh, we got any food reviews? No, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> Man, I can't remember the last time I ate. <laughs> <laughs> what did I have? Hmm. Oh, let me, let me. Um, I'll, I'll speak upon my diet. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, basically, what I've had this whole week was. Chicken, homemade chicken sandwiches, um, sn- snack logs from Pick and Save, because you know I need something sweet and I, and I like that. Um, and I've been drinking a lot of a zero sugar free Sprite. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. And um, so the um the only thing I think I had, oh, and I had eggs. I had eggs and bread. It's, it's to me, man. I'll be honest. It's like this is my second week on this sort of diet. Like, um, I do miss eating the pies and that, you know. But it's also a challenge of like I got four weeks to go, um, sticking to it. Like that's all I know. Uh, people do like I've been watching um, like reels and because uh, I'm on a, a, a fitness group page facebook page and their meals like their meals look attract like enticing you know i wish for me like a ham chicken ham sandwich that's that's my go-to you know um what are your guys experiences on like that sort of 
loving. <laughs> oh, we're, we're at the we're at the point because we've cut bread like big time. Like we're down to like two loaves for the whole week. Like um yeah uh, I noticed that like oh I think it's because like I don't know I'm not trying to sound like I'm trying to live like a living this freaking me I life but I'm at the point when I tell my girl like fuck that I'm not eating the bums of the bread anymore like you know I that was me like I would just oh all the bums <laughs> of the all the flour which is like almost ten pieces eh, and I just <laughs> taste it you know now I'm like nah fuck it give it to Jake give it to the dog like because I'm so used to eating wraps yeah. And like you know, you can make so many nice things with you know, like I just portion whatever's left over from the night before, and like everything is nice on a wrap, right? And I just fill the wrap on the on the pan like it's a naan bread, and chuck in some processed cheese, and then fill it up with heaps of greens, and then whatever leftover Meat. meat from the night before, I just lay it out. But I've got a solid review, um, food review of Costco. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. So like. I don't know if um, so there's a New Zealand Costco fan page. It's on Facebook. So all those people that really want to know, just go and it's free <laughs> to join. Like just send in and you're in. But like, there's so many people like they've said like everything's cheap and they're right. Like everything's bigger. The quantities are bigger. So the biggest one that I I do and you know chickens, chickens from Pack and Save, chickens yeah, from Woolworths. So ten dollars a Pack and Save, nine dollars will get you a whole chicken. Yeah, it's like a size thirteen chicken. So my wife, she's been going up. Because the kids, because we fill up at Costco now. Petrol up there at the moment was like two forty three, and it was last night two thirty four. So I filled up my truck a hundred bucks full tank. That's from empty, at that price. She she went and got a chicken, man. In my head, right, the way people was talking about a seven dollar chicken. This is a size fifteen chicken. So it was like what? Four. So it looks like it's got steroids. And like you know, when you grab the pack and save, gunga, right? It's like, whoosh, it's like it's like yeah, it's big. Gap, yeah. And he's like, oh, he's like, yeah, hey, yeah, really, yeah, yeah. But it looks like almost like well, if you eat more, ah, because it's like obviously shrinks. Oh yeah. But these chickens at Costco, so they, it's like they freaking on roids. It just looks so malor. <laughs> it's like oh, almost chicken size for seven bucks, bro. Oh. And then it was like the taste test for it, because yeah. you have to take because they come in like a little cake tin, but it's a plastic one. Yeah. And bro. I, I peeled the skin and I was like, man, what a boot off the skin, man. But oh, the kids aye. love it. Yeah. I think some so used to just, just having like a simple chicken, right? And then it just mold in the oven. Yeah. And then I took the big, got the butter knife and tried to slice it, you know? And I was like disappointed. It was, oh, it's a beef and chicken, man. Yeah. It was probably it just juicy looks, though? Bro, this chicken wasn't, wasn't juicy, bro. Oh, so out of like the pick and save or cost... Costco's Fuck I'd have to go with Pack and Save bro And oh, that's okay. being honest Cause you know The whole chicken And Pack and Save bro You can leave it In the fridge For a couple of days And put it in the microwave It still has that Soften Yeah You know It's still moist Yeah But this chicken So it's been in the fridge Like a day And it's fucking dry Like turkey dry Oh okay So A lot of that Juice is sat in the The chicken Like in the tray At the bottom of the Plastic oh, container yeah, yeah yeah But man That's a mess So all those Bukitos They said that the Costco chicken was nice Nah, he's got it wrong, man. He's yeah, got it oh, wrong fix. Time. Nice. Would you yeah. get another one just in case that no, was a bad I one? I wouldn't. Because now that, so. Just for we test. Had, we had dinner last night. But the more hasn't been touched, it's just the bits that I cut out. So that says a lot. And my kids yeah. are like, you know, they're sick of chicken, but they're like, no, what was wrong with it? But if it was a pick and save one, it was a pick and save one, I'm oh. eating the chicken back to night. It was, it was already, <laughs> you know, yeah. cut it up. But yeah, it was pretty disappointing today. And that's their basic chicken. So seven bucks. But I mean, if you're trying to feed like a whole house full of people when you want to go, that's where you I mean, get. seven dollars, you can't complain. Two of those. But then oh. again, you can go straight to Pack and Save, get a nine dollar chicken. And then, you know, it's good yeah. enough. But the goodness that's coming out of that is that Pack and Save Westgate is moving their prices as well. Oh, so apparently okay. they've moved on their chicken price. So cheap. Oh, I think they've matched it like maybe a dollar. But still. Yeah. The lines in the queues at Costco versus like just going to pick and save, just walk straight in there. Is it still, is it still massive, Lutz? The, the lines, lines. I think it's more new members line. Like oh, people trying to sign, sign up. up. Yeah, trying to sign up. And also the pizza, like they got pizzas there. I think that's a good. Because you know when you go into sales pizza? Yeah. You know, the, the, oh, the that New York size. portion size? Yeah. yeah. These slices, I think, are $3. But that's like the size of maybe two sales pizza slices. 
So that's massive. Wow. Because ever a ever a ten inch plate, yeah, that's la like, boy. Eh? Wow. Yeah, that's that's okay. big portions. But then a whole pizza is like seventeen bucks. Does it, does it come already cooked? Yeah. Oh, what? Already cooked, seventeen bucks. You buy it from the counter. Buy it from there's a counter. Oh. Because you can buy your hot dogs too. Because it's all separate <coughs> departments. Wow. Like I haven't been in, but this is what the kids tell me. They're like, my my wife ordered. She walks to the car, takes the groceries, and then comes back and stands in line with the kids. And they grab their pizzas. But uh, don't make the mistake of buying a hot dog, grabbing it, and walking out. Because you got to <laughs> put your own sauces on top. There's a, on the side, there's a oh, okay. condiment bar thing. We put the stuff on, like mustard, cheese, onions. Oh, then, then you give it to them. And they no, 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 no. They oh, ju- after. What they do is give you a roll with the sausage inside. And then... Oh. But don't go straight home because you got to put the stuff on. You have to put it on yourself. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm going to get you. I haven't checked that out yet. Yeah, check it out, man. If you got a, if you got a card, 17 bucks for a freaking... I think it's like 42 inches. Bruh. Or 39 inches. Uh, and they, are they, are they like sales pizzas. Yeah, sales pizzas like that big, right? So we got two of them for 34 bucks. Fuck. I'm going to wait to sell And the mm-hmm. portion, yes. yeah, that's what I'm saying. The portion size is the same as a... Yeah, like one slice is like double cell slice. Easy. Damn. <laughs> but stay stay on yeah, your finished journey, Goose. <laughs> when your challenge is Four finished, more weeks, man. then we'll go there. Four <laughs> more weeks. Hey, um, oh, just like because we finished the gym uh, on Friday, and I know you bought some stuff up at the, the shop yes, there. Yeah. What did you make? So we went up to the de- the dairy slash supermarket there. What the, it's like a four super, square a. super valley super valley it's like a four square a. yeah so i was expecting because it's a little bit more expensive than going to the packing seven then so yeah i was expecting a little bit a little bit pricey but i got two steaks for 12 oh, i think it was 12 dollars two steaks sirloin steaks and i got a head of um broccoli head of broccoli that's for three dollars so 12 so 15 dollar 15 dollar lunch for myself because because you know, no one was home, it was just me, because everyone was at work yesterday, so I took the day off, but then, yeah, so I, what I did was I um, cut up some some garlic, chopped up some some garlic, and put that aside, turned on the pan, um, chopped up the, um, I washed and chopped up the, the broccoli, put it in the pan, just fry it for a, a minute, and then just pour some water inside, and then put the lid on, so it's soaking steam. Then after it's cooked, I take it out, chuck in some oil, chuck in the chopped um, garlic, spread that around until it's brown, and then stick the 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 broccoli back in and mix it up. Put some chili powder on on top, salt and pepper, and then chuck in the chuck in the rest of the cooked um, broccoli. Oh, yeah. And then I. Put uh, lemon on top, lemon on top, and put some cheese on top, and that's all. That's all ready to go. So put that on the side, then cook my steaks with butter. You gotta cook the steaks with butter, and and you baste it, you baste the steaks with the butter, and then I flip it to the side and cook the I cook the fat because you know the sirloin has the fat one in. Just cook that in the butter, and yeah, that, that's that was my lunch. So that that's my kind of go to because. I've made this dish so many times. I'm getting pretty fast at it, and it only takes about twenty minutes. Yeah, it's a, it's a twenty minute thing. So it's good. It's good that um, I can have these things because, especially when you're by yourself. Because you know when you have to cook for a whole family, you got I gotta I gotta times that by by five or six. Yeah, <laughs> times yeah, it by yeah, six. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's pretty cool when you have to cook for yourself. Oh, nice. Shot Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the other story in the news was... Um, oh, I'm going to shout out to Phils because he threw up a story on our uh, Facebook a Facebook group page, MT the Clip Facebook group page. And it was about a company, a cleaning company in Christchurch. Now, they decided to bring out a rule for their staff members which who are um, from Samoa, Fiji, Philippines, to ban 
talking their own language and during their their breaks. And if they were to talk in their language, they could they do it outside outside the office and not during the break. So that's in their workplace, right? That's in their workplace, because and the owner of the company said that it's not racist. It's just me trying to be. It's just a equality, it's an equality <laughs> thing, so everyone can understand each other. <laughs> that's a bit silly. Eh? Yeah. What? What? Well, first of all, what, the question is: What? What nationality is the boss? Well, obviously, he's Balangi. <laughs> Sounds like. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah. I don't know, man. Like I said earlier, man. Like one of my sisters at work, man. We go hard dude, on that <laughs> shit. Eh? But like that, that's that's just that's just how it is. Like someone's her first language. Yeah. You know? And it's my third language. So it's not my fault that I happen to know someone as well. Yeah. But what's real, real. Awkward though is like because I've played in a rugby team where guys have said that out loud, like what? Well, so that article is saying that it's, it's semi racist, eh? But I've played in a rugby team where like the guys start speaking Tongan. Well, hello, these guys can't speak English, and then one of the Balangi guys just said, hey, "What are you up to? You like, hey, then then do that." And we're like, "What the fuck are you on?" Nah, it's because we don't understand what you're saying. So don't 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 talk your language in here. Pray yeah. straight away, you like. <laughs> you know? But at the same time it's like right, well what do you what do you want them to bark at each other? Yeah. Like fuck if they're talking they can't speak English. <coughs> What's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with it. I yeah. think it's an insecurity thing, eh, on the person that's around the there. boss. Yeah, or like Or the managers or whatever. Yeah, that's fucking wrong, bro. Yeah. Um, my opinion to it is like well, for me personally, like, I don't care if anyone's, you know, if I was in the workplace and people were talking in their own language or, you know, about me or whatever's because at the end of the day, you know, I'm just there to do my job and that's to focus on what's in front of me, you know, not like, you know, with the banter or if they're speaking like, you know, in Yugoslavian or whatever, you know. Um, nah, that, oh, that's a good point, um... That Lipo put up there, you know. It's a shame that there's still workplaces that are like yeah, that. Yeah, bro, know? straight up. Like, hello. It doesn't. It, well, it doesn't mean that the job does not get done. Oh. Yeah. But that's a request. Like, at the expense of what? That now you're gonna have people that are unhappy. Yeah. You know, like, is it really worth making it an issue? I was like, well, yeah, man. <laughs> what were you saying that they they can't talk on their native language or, or in like the smoker their, room on their phone? Oh, they can't have conversations on the phone because <laughs> people, people that will get people listening will get annoyed. Fuck, that's ugly, man. So Can you imagine now? Because we are Indian girls at our work, they talk on the phone eh? and like you know they always got that. They they even doing that <laughs> like the hair Can I not get a collection? Can I not get a collection? Can I Fuck, but but you know yeah. Can you take it outside? But not freaking banned from like talking like their language. Like that's just freaking stupid, man. Yeah, that'd be good to find out what kind of the, is it. Um, what are they called? Cleanless spot or spotless? Is it that company? Or what are they called? I uh, didn't say, it, but it says it's in crash it, so that says a lot. Oh, there you go. Oh, bro. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> you should have just said that in the first place, bro. Yeah. I was like, no, but then is it like a breach of the human rights, like to be told that in the workplace in this day and age? Like, surely it is. Yeah. Well, he's. Uh, it sounds like from the article that he's putting it. Up against he putting he's putting his his decision to make these rules up against the the diversity thing the equality thing. So if, if he's coming in the angle where well everybody has to be equal, like you have gotta understand each other. What's the point in talking a language if none, no one else understands? Like yeah. like if you if if you're from one culture and the and there's two guys or two people talking in their own language, and you might feel like are oh, they talking about me? Are they talking about me? And there might be that kind of mental health thing going on. I don't know, but but to me that sounds stupid. But I think that's what's going on. Oh, I don't know, but it still sounds stupid. I like to hear him trying to sell that to like a a work council there because it doesn't yeah. sound right. Eh? I think yeah. I feel like it's going against like the every, diversity. Yeah, stance, diversity is yeah. Stance all about like having. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're right, man. Like, hey, if you're the owner of this business. Just 
what about your bottom line, bro? Like, yeah. are you making the money? Are the, are yeah, the workers doing your job? Doing the job? job? That, that should be your priority, not yeah. worrying about how they're going to do it. Yeah, they're but I, this is not much I know. It was like, but you can kind of get your balance to come and do the exact same yeah, cleaning uh, job, yeah. speaking English. But they're going to be going, oh, this fucking wanker's fucking <laughs> just taking advantage of this piece of shit. <laughs> well, he wants to hear that. Yeah. But it's crazy, man. It's like, man. You need to try that, try that for him for size, eh? <laughs> nah, that's, that's a weird one, eh? It's a weird one. So, uh, fair book of the week. Does anyone have one? Yep, I do. Oh. KFC. Oh. Because there was a story <laughs> <and> this week. <laughs> the KFC changed the containers for their... Um, potato and gravy. Te- potato and gravy. And there have been reports across the country, the article said. Yeah. People complaining about how the potato and gravy tastes different now. It tastes like plastic. Well, see, that's an that, that interesting one, eh? Because I've always worked in plastics as well. Like, there's two sides of it, right? There's sort of two takes about it. It's the, um, like, there's a curing process with plastic. Like, if you add, like, say, uh, a piece of plastic has, has uh, um, a heat temperature, like, if you put anything higher than 60 degrees into that container, it's obviously going to change the physical, like, um, aspect and the acidities of, like, aesthetics of the plastic. So you end up tasting plastic in your food. It's either that, or purely the batch of powder and gravy that's been made is obviously being contaminated. Because there's wow. no way, like, you know, if you fill, like, a like a, um, a container of, like, aluminium, that you taste the aluminium, no matter what you fill in it. Because, you know, it's obviously made to cure and hold that, that um whatever liquid you put in it, carbonated, hot, whatever. But that, I reckon that's what it is, eh? It's like, maybe because that one whole batch is gone out, and it's probably been contaminated where they've obviously made it into powder. That can be the only thing. Cause yeah. I, like I don't think they'll put like untemperatured stuff in the in the workplace like something like KFC as big as they are. And whoever is making their plastic is not gonna make a fuck up like that because they're yeah. huge. Eh? So I would I, I don't think it's the containers. It's whoever batched up the the, the powder. Potato gravy. Yeah. Man. Oh, well, I haven't I haven't um oh well, I haven't actually tasted this batch or this run or whatever but i hope it hasn't changed because i actually like the potato and gravy yeah, ain't. yeah. i don't think they, they could change to be honest because that's their go eh? yeah man. You got, if you have potato and gravy it's like oh they're only staying buns stop wasting that chance man I, li- hey. I like sticking um like the, my chicken piece i'll just stick my whole chicken piece in the <laughs> thing whatever it is boom yeah, <laughs> have you guys tasted the potato uh, gravy at Texas Chicken? I like that. Oh. Man, that's yeah, nice, man. It's a different, no? Yeah, it's a different taste. That's nice. It's nice and spicy. With the, yeah. It's nice with the cornbread. Yeah, wow. man. Have you tasted? The, nah. You well, head to head next yeah. week. Yeah. Texas Chicken potato gravy versus KFC. Well, that's if you want to waste oh. money on the plastic tasting <laughs> KFC. <laughs> but no, see, this is the you gotta try it yourself, eh? Well, that's a danger. Like, see, because something like KFC, right? And probably that's the fuel of social media. All it takes is one person to go, oh, fuck, it tastes like plastic. Yeah, hard. Everyone's going to ride that wave now. But unless, you know, like, everything's got a traceability stamp on it, right? The day was best, the time, four, five-digit number that's going to trace it back to when it was made. So if one person does it, it's like, everyone's going to get it tastes like plastic. Fuck, they're going to get a voucher or some shit. I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case. You know, I, I believe that. I believe that plastic shit. Because I remember buying a, when I was, a, when I was fighting ages ago, as a student, I remember buying one of those cheap ass um, kettles to boil my water for coffees and that. And I think it was at warehouse. It was like cheap ass, what, five bucks or something. But man, the coffees taste like plastic, bro. <laughs> hey, Wait, yeah. is it because the you know inside the kettle was it rusting? I don't know, but it was brand new. Oh, but the coffees and teas I make, man, all taste like plastic. It tastes like the fucking inside the ke- of the kettle. Yeah. Yeah. So, it is a thingy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, has a, I reckon when it's like that, it's to do with the curing of whatever, like, the plate of the steel. So, that stuff, eh, if it hasn't been temperatured to a certain degree. Yeah. That's what oh. it tastes like. <laughs> as long as it's not, it tastes like aloe vice. <laughs> yeah, we need a, we need a taste today. Need to um, try it out. Well, yeah. Let us know. Let us know. <laughs> oh, no. Nah, I've got to wait. But the Texas chicken, like, Man, yeah, that man. sounds nice. Yeah, yep, that's, that's nice. pretty good. That's good, man. 
That's mm. my good to you. Over there. Four, four weeks. Or so we can do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright boys, before we wrap up, I'm just gonna go for last words. So I'll start with you, Alves. Uh if uh yeah, to everyone in my f- uh family and friends over in Oz, uh to my kids, uh um yeah, I miss you and I'm thinking of you all the time. Uh yeah, I'll be over there soon. Okay, very soon. Shadows. Oh man. Last words is um, just to everyone who's throwing shade over how authentic and how um, 100% supportive they are of like the tour. Like, honestly, get off your horse, man. Like, the, the national game, it's not Samoa's national game. People don't have a right to sort of throw shade like how, how what a real fan is and what a real supporter is. It's just a game. Like, let people live. Social media was built for the you know, it was built for haters, but also like those throwing judgment shade at people. It was like, don't have a have a look in the mirror, man. Like, because you know, Bob always says like, they be pointing fingers if your fingers ain't tainted. Like, you know, not everyone's pure, man. Like, there's so much sin in this world, and I believe I'll be standing at the gates of hell with all my doormen, boys. But I just <laughs> wanted to make a shout out to my boy Sonny. It's good to tee up with you last week. Um, thanks for plugging into us as well. I know. You, He's talked about a couple of episodes where he hears us eating. <laughs> and he just cracks <laughs> up at the eating. The <laughs> um, yeah, thanks for your support, Docs. And I look forward to doing uh, Once Upon a Time in Auckland City with you one day. Um, yeah, just and to everyone that's um, that's obviously lost people this year and like, um, who have loved ones that are aging, take the time to go and see them. Like, you know, there's one thing in this world that we're not promises and that's time. You know, um, people can be here one one day and be gone the next. But how we use the time, just like money, man. Like if you if you get, you know, if you inherited a million dollars, you wouldn't waste it, and like use that time with that same sort of mind frame. It's just um, yeah, spend it wisely, spend it on the ones you love, and um, yeah, just um, look for those who aren't well, aren't with us anymore because yeah, we're not all promised tomorrow. But uh, yeah, and you know, it is just a game. There's no need to get your knickers in the twist. <laughs> But yeah, relax. mad love <laughs> zipped out the clip from me. So, let's. so my last words, I just want to um, take a point of just saying it's been a busy week for the West West Network. Um, some good content just have come out this week. Good um, engagement with uh, people on social media, with the listeners, the followers, or whatever. Especially with the the Girls of Guys Scoop episode that came out with Cam, the real BDFS and uh, t- t- topics that were spoken on, on that podcast, and it's good to see all the engagement, all the all the comments, good or bad, because you know it's all about engagement. Whether those comments come in, you know, saying bad stuff or saying good stuff, it doesn't matter. It's all part of it. We understand, so all good. Um, yeah, just want everyone to have a safe week and look out for more for more content. I just want to um, say. Um, uh, back back on 135, had the privilege of having Salwin Kobo come into the studio and have a, have a chat with me on back on 135, and that episode will be coming out real soon. I have to put that put that put that episode up maybe Tuesday. And yeah, it was a good talk. So thanks, boys, for for coming in for another episode. Hope you guys have a good week. Shadows. You know what it is. Let's get the fuck out of here. Yeah, right.